My name is Tom Carter. I'm the executive director of the Utah Clean Air Partnership, commonly known as UCARE. So my name is Jessica Reimer, and I'm a policy associate with Heal Utah, or the Healthy Environment Alliance of Utah. We want to empower Utahns to understand their role when it comes to the air quality issues here in the state. When a high pressure system comes in, it'll sit on top of the valley like a lid, and that's an inversion. And that lid won't go away until a snowstorm, a rainstorm, or a very heavy windstorm pushes that high pressure system out. Once that lid goes on, pollution doubles every day. So our emissions from that first day stay in the air. Not only is the air not moving, but the pollution that's being released within the valley itself is getting trapped. We really do have control over what we put into the air, and that's the, the ultimate challenge that we face. But the inversion, unfortunately, kind of creates those conditions that make that you know, build up of pollution worse. Everybody must take responsibility for their own personal emissions and not waste any, because you cannot solve inversion. You cannot fix inversion. There's no low-hanging fruit left when it comes to fixing air quality. And so because it's not low-hanging, it becomes expensive. The biggest problem is people understanding that it's your car and you need to do something about it. When's the best time to plant a tree? Well, it's 20 years ago. When's the next best time to plant a tree? Today. So when people say to me, my, my efforts don't mean anything or I can't do anything, we're wrong. The biggest misconception that the public generally seems to have about air quality is that it's all due to the industrial sources that are in the valley. The reality is the biggest players are actually our vehicles that we drive around and the smaller sources that are like our homes, our buildings, small businesses that are distributed throughout the valley build up and essentially create kind of this one bigger source of, of pollution. The issue related to social consciousness of all environmental issues, it disproportionately affects the poor amongst us. Vulnerable populations that are distributed differently within the valley. We have communities that are, that sit lower in the valley, for example, that are closer to our freeways and closer to the industrial sources. Because of the, the concentration of emissions that happen from those areas, those communities are disproportionately exposed to poor air quality. We also look at where our air quality is the worst in this valley. They're in two neighborhoods, Rose Park and Hawthorne. Well, disproportionately, when you look at those, at those zip codes, those are our lowest income zip codes in Salt Lake Valley. Rose Park neighborhood is near the interchanges of I-80, I-15, and 215, three roads. It's near our refineries, and it's near the Union Pacific switchyard. There is an environmental justice piece to this where you might have what are called frontline communities that tend to be lower income, tend to have less access to resources, potentially less access to the income and health care needed to address the problems that are associated with poor air quality. 52% of people say, I will do what I can for air quality. However, it has to be convenient or cost effective. If you just turn your thermostat down one degree, it'll reduce your emissions by 1%. Be smart about your car, be smart about your home, then you're just part of the solution. In terms of some other things that people can do on an individual basis, one would be to pay attention to the smog ratings when you're in the market for either a new vehicle or even a used vehicle. The other thing we obviously encourage people to do is to carpool. So carpooling to reduce what are called cold starts in the winter. That being said, there's a lot of different things that the government can do to help encourage individuals to make changes that are going to be beneficial. Those are things like, you know, potentially incentivizing electric vehicles. So when I ask college students to talk to those, their friends or their family members that are a little bit older, just be aware, instead of saying, you have to need to do these things, take them with you and say, will you try this with me? Just be smart, right? Think about how many emissions that you have and are you wasting them? Do you idle your car? If you drive to Starbucks, do you need to sit outside of Starbucks for 17 minutes to get your coffee? We can keep doing more to get that message out because I still think that we're not at the point where people are necessarily changing their behaviors because of poor air quality. And we need to get to that point where there's kind of a cultural shift 
and how you know we see air emissions and how we individually contribute to those. I have the right to health. I have the right to happiness. I think clean air is a human right if it affects my ability to be healthy and safe. That's where we have to lean our direction towards health and well-being of the general public. We all have a part to play in improving air quality, shifting our laws and incentivizing people to change behavior, developing policies to do that. In efforts to clear the air, there are no perfect answers, but there are practical solutions. And everybody's practical solution is different. So find what works for you, and then do it. And try, and keep trying, and add something new every day. Take responsibility for you, then work with other people. Find out your practical solution, and go and do it today. Don't wait, and then you're part of the solution.